So we've come to the final planet in our Forces of Consciousness videos, and this is the planet Saturn. It's the seventh planet, the last of the visible planets that we can see with our naked eye. After Saturn, in Vedic astrology, we have Rahu and Ketu, the eighth and ninth. Uh, they're not planets, they are actually points in the sky, but they give an energetic influence. In Western astrology, the eighth and ninth are um, called the north and south nodes, north node Rahu, south node Ketu. And then we have the three non-visible planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Uh, in traditional Vedic astrology, they weren't, they aren't dealt with. They weren't discovered until uh, much later on after most of the Vedic texts were written. So those planets are, um, are treated a bit differently. Uh, they're not the forces of consciousness. So when we say Saturn is the last planet, we're talking about visible planets and we're talking about the forces available in our present conscious awareness. So the North Node, the South Node, Rahu and Ketu are, are points in the sky that give subconscious influence, energetic influence nonetheless, but it's our subconscious that those deal with. And then the non-visible planets are have more to do with our spiritual development. And we're not going to be dealing with those in these videos because we're focused in on these forces that we are consciously aware of and what we use on a daily basis and have the most prominent importance for our daily life. So Saturn is not the last planet in that sense, but in our conscious um, uh, world, it is the last planet, number seven. And so Saturn is the force of detachment within us. And Saturn has a lot of negative connotations when, it's, when uh, this planet is talked about because it's the force that we use to deal with negativity in the world and it gives us an overall sense of lacking something. And for example, feeling unhappy or feeling discontented about something or feeling that something's missing in order to feel anything, especially to feel unhappy, you have to have, or happy, you have to have that already inside of you. And it goes with any emotion, it goes with any sensation that you have. If you feel it, that means it's there. And where this feeling of unhappiness and discontent, that's the force of Saturn. And Saturn, as we go, as we get to the end of the video, as we do in these videos, we're looking at how these planets spiritualize us. And Saturn might be the simplest planet to understand, and it, it might also be the most profound because it has such powerful implications on how it's used in our consciousness. Um, a Saturn can really make or break the chart. It can really um, make somebody uh, into a extremely worldly successful person. But it, could all, but it could make that worldly successful person um, suffer psychologically or it could even cause, it can cause people to have ter uh, lives filled with inner turmoil and hardship no matter how successful they are. It can go either way and it's all about how we are using um, this force within us because we can't avoid it. Um, the fact that life is hard is a major theme for Saturn. And the sooner we get to that realization, the, the better we can utilize our ability to deal with the difficult parts of, of life that don't get better with time. They just have to be dealt with. And that's what Saturn's all about. So using Saturn is of the utmost importance. And before we can use Saturn, we have to understand the these uh, parts of Saturn. And that's what this video is about. So. The sun is the first planet. The sun is our soul. It's our eternal self. It's our um, inspired eternal um, power to do. Saturn as the seven is the farthest from the sun. And it's our sense of separation from the most eternal part of ourself. And when we're separated from the eternality and from the most, the brightest, the most um, uh, powerful part, um, element in the sky, but also that part of ourselves. Being so far gives the sense of, of missing something. And so 
that's what Saturn is. It's, it's feeling at the, the farthest point you are from your most inspired, um, active uh, purpose in life. It's feeling that I don't have things and I would like those things, but I can't escape this feeling that I don't have certain things. And wherever Saturn is in the chart is where we're going to experience that sense of lack. Those activities that we're just not good at, depending on the house, uh, where the, ho uh, the houses that Saturn is influencing and also the planets that Saturn is influencing. We're going to be separated from, to a certain extent from those things. And when it comes to, um, it comes to a house, we're going to be separated from that experience. If it's the seventh house, we're going to have a sense of separation or a lack of having a, uh, uh, partners in our lives that are giving us a sense of deep fulfillment. Or if it's the ninth house, we're going to have a, a sense of lack from complete understanding of our purpose. And it goes through each, um, through each house, wherever Saturn is, we're going to feel we're not fully complete with that area of life. And the, the more that Saturn is aspecting a planet, the more, the, the less we're able to feel that we can use that planet to the, to the most, pro, um, to the most, um, powerful extent. We, we're not able to use those planets to the full extent that we would like to use them. So Saturn's giving us separation. It's making us detached from these parts of our lives. And that's the basic core because it's the, it's the farthest planet from the sun, the sun being our inspired self. And in this sense that Saturn uh, being our, our separateness from divinity, it's what is the most separate thing from uh, divinity, divinity being the connection of everything. It's our ego. And like the moon is our sense of separate existence, that we're a different person from each other person. Saturn is our ego in the sense of, uh, of pure survival in the worldly sense. So Saturn is going to give that sense of, um, a raw, um, uh, uh, primal kind of sense that I need to keep my body and myself going. And, uh, it's going to give that, um, kind of, uh, and so what is the ego? The ego is a, as with the moon, the ego is a separate, is uh, the sense of separation from everything being together. And Saturn's giving that in, in a much more of a physical way of just raw, um, ability to get over a threat, uh, an immediate threat in the sense of physically surviving. And um, so these threats um, that Saturn, the, con the Sat Saturn consciousness that we use, these uh, that we're using these uh, to overcome threats, these are threats that never stop throughout our life. And it's it's a cruel planet like Mars in the sense that Mars is overcoming obstacles on a daily basis that we can um, obstacles that can be overcome. Saturn is dealing with things that can never be overcome. And when we're talking about survival, we'll never be able to fully overcome the need to eat or to survive and have shelter. There are things that we just never are able to um, be above. And that's how, and that's our force of Saturn. How do we deal with these things that never go away? And on the basic level, it's the survival, um, the, the survival mechanism in a physical sense. But when we start talking about psychologically, how is Saturn psychologically working in us? What are certain things that we're never going to be good at? We're not good at. And how do we deal with the fact that we're, how do we deal with that fact? And if it's something that we need to do in life, how are we going to muscle ourselves into doing it? Even if it's the last thing on earth we want to do. So a person with a, a good Saturn, when Saturn's in his own signs, or is being helped by his friends Mercury and um, uh, Mercury and Venus. This is a person will, who will be able to have less fear when it comes to doing things that they really don't want to do, or having the sense that, okay, I see what I'm not good at and I can accept that. And if it's something that I have to do, say you just hate doing um, a basic uh, house chore, say doing laundry. It's you, you, there's nothing worse than doing laundry for you. Someone with a good Saturn is going to realize, well, 
I have to do I have to do that and I can't just buy new clothes every week. So they're going to find a way to muscle through doing that thing that they hate to do. And it could be other stuff too, things that we don't ever have to do. Um, say playing um, playing tennis. Say if you hate playing tennis, it's something you never were good at, never wanted to do. Someone with a good Saturn is gonna say, yeah, I never wanna do that and never have the desire to do that. They know what they're not good at and they accept that they're not good at and they don't try to be good at it. And it, and it gets deeper and deeper because um, people who, okay, so people who have a bad Saturn, a Saturn that is hurt by the sun, the Saturn and sun are, are major enemies in the chart. Uh, them together, they, they mutually hurt one another. Saturn's in the sun sign conjunct with the sun. Or um, if Saturn is in um, is in the is debilitated in Mars's sign, and and plus other different combinations uh, where Saturn can be um, not to its full um, power, is someone who is not understanding what they're not good at, and because they don't understand what they're not good at, they're not able to accept it, and then they're not able to avoid it at. Uh, to the best extent possible. These are people who don't want to, um, they don't want to think that they're bad at anything. Sometimes these people can be even uh, very obstinate or impatient and then end up wasting a lot of time doing things that will never improve. And by never improve, uh, we have to have the wisdom to know what will improve and what won't improve. So having a good Saturn is important to know what can I just never overcome? What are things that I'm just going to have a problem with this all the time? And then how can I find strategies that little by little I can improve at, but understand in the whole, in the context of my whole life, it's something that's just always going to be a struggle for me. Because that's what Saturn is. It's struggles that we don't, aren't able to ever overcome. Whereas Mars is, are, is struggling to overcome certain obstacles. And so what uh, how are we choosing our fights? Someone with a good Saturn is going to not choose those fights that they can't win. And then they'll use their Mars for, to win fights that they know that they can win. But someone with a bad Saturn is not going to know how to choose their battles. They're going to be choosing battles that are doomed to lose. And they're going to waste a lot of time into becoming extremely frustrated. And when Saturn and Mars are together, that's another uh, factor that can cause a person to become very impatient and waste their time doing things that they'll never become good at. But it depends on each chart, and um, and it comes down to that in ability to endure through things. And a good Saturn is someone that's able to get through those difficult things and endure, um, endure the pains of having to do certain things. So Saturn is, is Saturn represents our weaknesses, where we are, and um, where we are, and what we realize that we're not going to be able to, uh, what in this particular life we're going to just not be good at. And so understanding our Saturn is understanding where in our chart is our Saturn and what things that we're going to be struggling with physically, spiritually, and psychologically. And some, and that brings into mind fears. Saturn is a planet um, about fear. And fear can be taken in, in two very stark directions because fear is a, it's a, a survival mechanism. And someone that has a, uh, uses their fear in order to survive and to, to selectively use their fear, someone that can, when they're afraid, it's a, of great benefit. If you fear being persecuted by groups of people, or if you fear being ostracized by society, that's because you're fearful of being unable to take care of your family. And it Go, the, the fear is rooted in a survival need. So someone could be afraid of anything, but if it's rooted in a survival need and it makes sense that, yeah, if, if you're not able to, um, if, you're able, if you're not able to avoid a certain situation and it leads to you being unable to survive, that's a fear that is helping you not, it's helping you to avoid whatever situation that is. And that's, an, that's using fear to our advantage in a certain in a certain way if you can see why you're afraid of something and see why it comes back to a sense of of um of not knowing what the factors are or having a survival need not being met then you can you then you can understand when you're feeling fear 
and see that, yeah, it's rooted in the fact that if I don't get these things, I'm going to struggle further. So we can use fear in a good way. On the other hand, um, we all have probably met people who are fearful people in general. These are people that can't get over the fact that, or they str they're struggling with the factors, with unknown factors. Most fears are based on um, not knowing certain things. And because you don't know, it's creating a threat. So someone with a bad Saturn is going to feel threatened because they're fearful. And when someone's living in fear and making decisions off of fear, it's going to cause that fear not only to perpetuate into other areas of their life, it's going to cause miscalculations in all sorts of ways. So avoiding um, making decisions off of being fearful uh, is really important to just have a sense of um, not walk around with a sense of dread all the time. And as I said, Saturn has an, it's us how we're dealing with negativity. A fearful person is totally uh, unhappy deep down, even if they pretend or say they aren't unhappy. It's a vibration that it's a very, it's a very slow moving wavelength fear. And it doesn't take long for someone's fears to cause, uh, start to cause physical deterioration. And so this is another sign of someone with a, uh, a difficult Saturn in their chart, someone that is fearful in general or not able to deal with fears in a, in a way that can uh, help them in the long run, that, that they'll still understand why they're afraid and see the use of being afraid of certain things at certain times. Taking that overboard, uh, it can easily be done. And when making decisions uh, based on fear, we end up making uh, erroneous decisions because there's more factors at play than just the threat of survival. And so Saturn is also um, in uh, the in Ayurvedic medicine. There are the doshas. There's um, there's uh, pitta, pitta, kapha, and vata. Pitta is the drying force. It's a fiery force. Kapha is the watery force of receptive force, and vata is the wind force of change. The planets have different combinations of these forces. Saturn is only Vata. And being only Vata makes him the a planet of dealing with changes. He doesn't have any Pitta initiation nor any Kapha receptivity. So there's no way from this mode of change that a person can then work their way out of the change and initiate and do things that can that can initiate changes nor can they receive information receive changes using kapha and be receptive receptive and therefore adaptive to things and to make positive changes no saturn is just changes and changes are stressful and changes are basically survival mechanisms also saturn is a neutered planet and so Saturn has no masculine or femininity. So it's not a planet that can, that can uh, do itself out, work itself out of a problem or receive itself out and receive good things while making changes. It's just dealing with the basic, <laughs> it's just survival on its own. And so again, it comes back to Saturn just being a force of bearing the brunt of difficulties all the time. And um, a good Saturn, someone with a good Saturn is going to be a really tough person. Someone with a physical, um, as we would say, leathery skin or thick skin. Someone who's able to um, uh, deal with changes in life with, um, uh, with toughness and be uh, mentally tough. Not only physically, but mentally tough. And to physically weather elements, to be able to deal with um, um, hardships in the physical sense. But we're also with Saturn dealing with psychological, psychological fears and psychological negativity as well. It's not just physicalities. And so Saturn in the chart, as we were saying, is going to give a sense of lack. Someone with a good Saturn is going to be able to weather that sense of lack with a certain toughness and a certain ability to just knuckle under and push through uh, wherever they're feeling these, uh, their insecurities. And wherever they're feeling, um, they're, where they're feeling uh, um, 
separations from whatever things in life. And the best way to deal with uh, this sense of separation and this lack and this and to use your toughness is to not compensate. And so this is a really key part of the whole Saturn discussion is when we are realize when we have certain fears and we have weaknesses and maybe we don't realize what they are fully. Uh, you haven't had an astrology reading for someone to describe uh, the behaviors behind each of these forces and you're unclear about them. When you have fears and weaknesses and you respond with the opposite behavior, it's called compensation. You're compensating for a lack with the opposite. So it's someone that fears, ha so say Saturn's in the second house. Second house is, our, is your responsibilities. It's also a house of wealth and family and taking care of the things that you have. So say Saturn is in the second house. A person who, a, this person will feel a sense of lack of not having the full extent of their responsibilities taken care of all the time. They're gonna feel like it's never enough. They never have enough material security where they're going to feel content. It's, they're always gonna feel somewhat separated no matter how rich they are because that's where Saturn is in their chart. It's creating this psychological complex. If this person understands their Saturn and they realize and they can start begin to accept and work through their, their sense of lack of material security and sense that, that nothing is ever enough to make um, their daily life and their, um, their responsibilities feel like they're fully taking care of everything all the time, that they've handled everything at the end of the day, there's always something left to do to take care of. If they come to accept that they have this part and they can work through step by step over the long term to deal with it, it's a person that's working on their Saturn. If a person is not accepting that they're afraid and they have a, an insecure complex around this particular area of their life, they're going to compensate by pretending that fear doesn't exist. And that compensation can come in a lot of forms. It can, well, for the second house specifically, the compensation can be, I don't need any material security. I don't need to take care of any of responsibilities. It's all just, you know, I, I can just live on the street and be totally content. When deep down inside of them, they're deeply afraid of not being materially secure, but they deny it. So it's a compensation attitude. Another way someone that can compensate for this fear of material security and being able to take care of responsibilities is getting all the money possible, becoming a billionaire, becoming someone who's got the biggest house, the most access to resources. These people who are hoarders, deep down, they're fearing the inability to have a material sense of security. This is a compensation. They're not accepting and working on their psychological complex of their Saturn. And they compensate with the opposite behavior by going so overboard with taking care of material security that they end up um, causing themselves even more problems by having so many material possessions. And this is just one house. This is just the second house. So all of the houses will create these types of complexes and it's all about how we're dealing with these compensation, uh, whether we're compensating or we're accepting consciously what's happening and what our fears really are. So this is this is the psychological aspect of of how we're dealing with the Saturn, how we're dealing with these weaknesses. And so now that we've spoken about this, the negative components of Saturn, let's turn and and look at the other side. How we can we take these? negative components and see how they're actually opportunities to be used as positive elements in our in our psyche in our life. So Saturn is also restraint. So sometimes the best mode of action in any situation is to just simply do nothing. It's to stop, wait, be patient and wait for the problem to go away. Sometimes just taking a nap if you're having a horrible day, taking a nap and waking up a little bit later, you're going to have a different rhythm going on. You're going to actually solve that strenuous problem by just 
stopping and waiting for life to um, take this problem and move it beyond you. And it's not saying we're avoiding our problems. It's just literally strategically better to do that at times. And it, and, and um, someone with not a good Saturn is not going to, is, is, is not going to realize that sometimes that's the best, that's the best way of action is just to, to do little, to do very little. And so this feeling uh, that, or this action of restraining oneself and to not always be saying yes to life, to say no, to hold back and say, okay, no, I'm going to, I'm not going to invest my energy in doing whatever thing I'm going to hold back and I'm going to preserve myself to preserve my resources, preserve my energy for a later time and um, not overexerting oneself. And this is the long-term perspective and long-term planning. One of the major parts of a good Saturn, someone that's able to see that every moment is affecting later moments. And that goes for years. Saturn is the slowest planet. It takes 28 years to go around in each sign, 27 to 28 years. So someone with a good Saturn is going to be able to see that, yeah, I'm not going to have this today, but you know, if I keep up every day working a little bit on this in three, four, five years, I'm going to have a, you know, a really nice project on my hands here. I'm not going to be able to do it all in, in three months. It's going to take a long time. How do I get to that bigger goal? I got to work at it little by little each day. That's a good Saturn. It's being able to see the long term and plan for that long term and to be able to see opportunities that will only come with, with little incremental steps because Saturn is only incrementally moving every day, you know, barely visibly moving. And that's how when we can take that, it's like uh, when we're using that force inside of us to a strong, to a to a powerful degree or to a, to our advantage, we're able to build gradually whatever our ambitions are. So it's this patience, a super positive um, component of a good Saturn. It's not all negativity, patience, perseverance, another extremely positive um, component of Saturn. Sometimes when the problems are so difficult, you just have to keep going. How many times in life have we had to realize that we just have to keep going just keep doing it yeah we had a bad day today but tomorrow's another day you keep going perseverance and um but in someone with um obviously with not a good sadness is not going to have these things strong in their tool in their toolkit and someone that isn't able to have long-term planning you can see in them they're not going to want to um, start at the bottom of something. They're not going to want to start at point one. They're going to want to already be successful way too soon. And they're going to want to have um, rewards before any work is actually done, before any hard work has really gotten off the ground. This is someone who will have the, uh, an, a bad Saturn will have this kind of impatience. They don't, they don't feel comfortable starting as just a regular person and, and working their way up through the through the ladder of success and through uh, and climbing that mountain uh, of your goal. And so Saturn is, is the menial worker in the kingdom of the self. It's the foundation of the kingdom. Without the workers, there is no kingdom. It's, the, it's just a castle with the people that help the king. Without the workers, Saturn, everybody else, there is no, there's nothing. These are the people that do the, the regular jobs and in, uh, in, in everyday life, but in ourself, in our consciousness, this is the force that we use to do little small things throughout the day that are important. And that if we avoid them, it's just going to cause other problems to escalate. Having a bad Saturn is someone that's not going to want to do small little tasks throughout the day that are absolutely critical to maintaining um, <clears throat> a cohesive life in general. Not doing little chores around the house, those build up. And then when the, when the chores build up, it causes a mountain of other problems and they just start cascading the, the problems. It's because little by little, you have to do these little things. So all of these show that Saturn is actually a planet while it has this connotation of negativity and stress and, and dealing with the hard part of life. It's actually a planet that can show in the astrology chart uh, the level of someone's ability to have success. 
So wow, yes, yeah, success. A successful person will have a good Saturn because over the long term, they're building little by little with a future goal in mind, a plan for the long term, an ambition, and understanding that getting there is a, is a long process. So Saturn is actually an indicator of how the level of one's success and the level of one's work over the long period of time, the, the great works that they're able to do, because great works aren't completed overnight. Um, some artists are able to visualize things. They can have sparks of um, of, of creativity, but it, every um, successful person will will explain that it takes long. It takes a long time to have a foundation of success, and it takes a lot of perseverance, and it's a lot of hard work. Someone who's not willing to work hard over a long period of time is just going to have. Mini, um, mediocre levels of success. It's, it's all of these elements combined. So Saturn is actually a planet that can show us a great deal of someone's ability to achieve to high levels in, the, in our material world. And so that brings us to the spiritual um, element of Saturn. How is Saturn spiritualizing us? And it comes back to its initial force, detachment. When we're able to see our material existence. We have to survive. Saturn is our ability to survive on the base level. And we're seeing things that we're not good at. We want to be good at, but we're not. We just have to bear with it and go for it. When we're doing these kinds of activities and we detach ourselves from these activities uh, psychologically and then spiritually detach, we start to see that we are not these things. We're actually not all of those other planets. Even the sun. The sun is just the force for us to understand our eternal soul. Our eternal soul. But in a material life, when we detach from the, the real, when we realize that we are not actually any material at all, we are actually an eternal being having a material existence, we can then come to greater realizations and then bear burdens to a much greater degree because all of this work that we have to do on the material plane of existence is all necessary. That's why we have Saturn because we have to have strategies to deal with the work that needs to get done. We have all the other planets as well to help us deal with the necessities of material life entails. But when we can take this seventh planet, this final planet, and, and remove ourselves from it, from that experience, we're able to see from a higher understanding of the, of the use of all this. And when we can see the use of all this, we can better understand what our, our duty is in life. And this is a, um, this is, uh, this process of detachment is one of the greatest benefits that someone uh, with um, that we can learn to use, whether we have a good Saturn or a bad Saturn, is to learn to see everything as a way that is going to, although we have to deal with the burdens of life, there's always ways that we can separate ourselves. And the ultimate, the ultimate burden of life or the ultimate obstacle that can never be overcome is death. No one can overcome death, it's just the truth. This is why Saturn is a, uh, represents longevity and death. Restraint, restraining one's um, life force and resources, Saturn, leads to longevity, leads to living a longer life. But at the end, death can never be overcome. So how do we deal with the fact we're all going to die? Someone with a good Saturn is going to will detach from that um, inevitability and say, yes, it's just a part of my life. Someone with the bad Saturn is going to fear death. They're not, and death is an unknown to all of us. So again, it's this fearing of something we don't have control over. And, and Saturn is also the, uh, it represents our ages 70 to age 120, this old age period of, of our life. And at this uh, time of our life, we're learning to detach further and further from our material existence and working spiritually to grow. And so the more that we can uh, see our material existence as just one, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a struggle. Material life is not easy. 
And we have a Saturn to deal with that, to deal with that fact that life isn't easy. And how the question is, how well are we dealing with that? And so that's what actually the Saturn return is at age 28. And then at age, uh, around age 60, we have two, most people have two in their life. And it has this um, negative connotation, but what's the Saturn return? It's when Saturn has this whole revolution throughout each sign of the zodiac, returns to your natal position. And during this time, we're assessing Saturnian things. And when we're assessing Saturnian things, we're assessing how well are we dealing with the fact that life is hard and how are we dealing with it? People who are not dealing with that reality in a realistic mindset and seeing things as they are, Saturn is realism, seeing things for what they are and dealing with it, someone that's going to have deeper psychological problems that they're going to have to continue to work through. Someone that's used to that fact that things are a struggle and it's never going to stop is someone that's going to have a Saturn return that's more or less simple because they already are dealing with that. That that reality that life is a is a, um, life has serious burdens, and that death doesn't have to be a burden. Death is just the beginning of something else. How are we dealing with death? How are we dealing with the unknown? How are we dealing with our fears? And are we able to work through these things with strength? and perseverance and patience. So that's Saturn. And as you can see, you can extract so many ideas from it, but Saturn is really easy to understand, but it's it's very profound because it's dealing with some of the, the most um, important um, uh, issues that can make life bearable and actually great because you're able to do things long-term for success, or it's, or it's these things that life is so hard and we can't figure out why it's so hard. And Saturn is oftentimes the root of a lot of these issues. So it's an extremely important planet, although being the seventh and the, the last planet. But that's Saturn. So the next videos, I'm going to be dealing, doing a video on the uh, subconscious influences of Rahu and Ketu. Uh, that's extremely important. But um, I'm also going to be doing videos on, uh, on these forces of consciousness and more specific examples of how these forces are working in us with everyday, uh, everyday characters, people that we would know, um, even characters, fictional characters in books or uh, literature, so that we can hone in and understand these forces to a, to a more in-depth degree because we all have them, they're all within us, and they're all... Uh, we're, all, we're always using them all the time and working with them. And the more we understand ourselves, the more that we understand the planets, the more we understand ourselves and how we can uh, grow as human beings. Okay, thank you.